Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel everyone. It's June now, so it's a lot warmer, finally. <laughs> the sun's actually shining. It's been scorching for the past few days. I've been out a few times on matches and the weather's been absolutely beautiful. Bit too hot for me and the fish, but I'm not gonna complain because I'm loving the weather. And I thought today, while I'm back at home in Carlisle, I'll come down to my local venue, Carlton Hill Fishery, just for an hour on an afternoon it's about half three now, so I'm going to spend an hour and a half on the bank, shoot a little video and hopefully catch some roach. I've been coming to this venue for years. I used to fish it a lot when I was younger, and it's absolutely stuffed full of roach. Some big ones as well, like not massive specimen size, but big, good sized roach for sort of a little venue. And the best way to catch them is up in the water with maggots. Proper exciting fishing. You can get a bite every truck pretty much, so that's the plan of the day hopefully just show you a few things just go for a session together really you can watch maybe um learn a few things but hopefully we'll just get a few, few bites enjoy the afternoon's weather so we'll get down to the fishery now and then i'll give you a little show around of the lake where we're going to fish once we get there and i'll see you in a minute right so we have arrived at the fishery can have a little wander around now see what pegs are free not been here since my roach fishing video, which I did when it was a lot colder and a lot more difficult. But it's changed a bit now. There's a lot of uh, foliage. It's looking absolutely stunning. But yeah, I used to come to this venue all the time when I was younger. Would be here day in, day out on a weekend. In the holidays, it was every day. I used to just love the place. Still love it now, but I don't get the chance to come as much because I do a lot more match fishing now. But I mean, look at the lakes, proper little Mr. Crabtree sort of water. Loads of silt, it's like a sort of stock commercial, but it's, it's almost a natural venue as well. I don't know, I'll just flip the camera around. You can see, down here, peg 13. Little duck there, quack, quack. But I mean, we could have a go here. At least it's a bit quieter here. But like, look at all the sort of. There's a carp sat on the pads there. See a little swirl. But down here, there's that lily pads, little tree. But like, if I threw maggots out, I think I'd catch loads of roach. At least there's no none of that fluff here. I think there's quite a lot of fluff down the bottom end. But we can have a little look up here. Have a look. This is the peg that we fished when it was in winter. It's a little bit different now. <laughs> Whenever you can see any carp sat in the pads. There's someone fishing there. Look at it, absolutely stunning. Maybe we have a little walk around, see what the rest of the lake looks like. Say hello, Harry. Fishery dog. Ready? <laughs> you want to bring it back. This is the finest tackle shop in Cumbria. <laughs> this is Chris. Known him for absolutely years. Fishery owner. I'm gonna get this up. Yeah, say hello to the camera. Wait, to the <laughs> Can I have some maggots, please, Chris? How many would you like to say? Uh, pint and a half, please. Are That'll do we? Me? Yeah, I am, yeah. Uh, would that be the usual guaranteed match winning maggots? Eh? That would be the guaranteed match winning maggots. The finest maggots money can buy. Never let me down. Thank you very much. <laughs> pint and a half. Yeah, pint and a half, please. Get the maggots and then we'll get off to our peg. Here we go. We are at the peg now. Peg 13 on the trees pond at Carlin Hill. Let's get the gear set up now. I think this looks perfect for ship the pole back up there. Got me maggots. Said hello to Chris. 
Hopefully I might be able to get a few shots from over there, that little platform. But yeah, I remember once fish that one in the match when I was proper young. I think like it must have been like seven, seven years ago maybe now at least. And I caught nothing and then I fed some bread next to them lily pads over there. And it's about two foot deep and I caught one carp. I think it got me like second or third in the match, it was like five, six pounds. But yeah, end of that story. Get my gear set up. And um, yeah. I'll talk to you once I'm all ready to go. Right, so welcome to the peg. We're all set up now. We've just got one rig. We're here for, for maybe an hour or so, just a little evening session. Get out of the house, enjoy a bit of fresh air. Now the weather's nice. Got my mic, so the volume's gonna be all right. Finally, we've got that sorted. Took a little bit of time, but thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for watching the video. If you're enjoying the channel, let's get into it. So bait, dead simple. As you've already heard, match winning maggots. Got these from the tackle shop, pint and a half of mixed, got some right little, got some right mixed colours. I've got whites, yellows, a blue, it could be a blue in here, there's usually a blue. White, yellows, reds, mixture of everything really. I think that's that's I don't think it makes a difference to be honest with you. Just whatever's in your tackle shop, grab them. Got that in a little tub, that's all I need for the session. Got my water, got my sun cream, not gonna need it, I don't think now it's clouded over nicely, so it's gonna be nice and cool. It's about four or five o'clock, something like that. I'll talk you through the rig before we do a little bit of fishing, but let's get the, fit, the swim fed. Try and get them roach competing. I'm literally just throwing sort of 10, 15 maggots in an area about, it's only, I'm only fishing the top kit, short four and a five out, and they're actually swirling for the maggots. I don't know if you can see them. They might start swirling properly. I've only been feeding it for a few minutes now, but hopefully they'll, they'll come right up in the water. I've just set one rig up. I'll talk you through it now literally got a pink hydro elastic nice and soft i didn't if i was coming for a match or something like that a bit more serious i'd probably set up with like single sixes something like that something a little bit softer but to be honest with you this is what i've got through my kits so this is what i'm going to use it's through a long kit a diver one on a puller kit so if i do hook anything bigger there is an odd eyed in this pond skimmers but it'll be mainly roach for catching because they're absolutely ravenous in this pond and it's full of the full of the things anything from that but there's some good stamp ones too so I've just got a pink hydro, a little um, Dacron connector, that's just a pole elastic connector from Tackle Guru. Great little things. If I was fishing for F1s, I'd do it direct to the elastic, but when I'm fishing for roach, I'm not too fussed to be honest. I'm going to be striking it a lot of my bites. I've just set up with a long line, that's about 18 inch lash, but when we start fishing, we'll try and figure it out, see what sort of, see what, if I'm hitting, missing bites, do I need to change depths, maybe a shorter line would be better. We can figure that out as we go, but that's what I'm going to start with. Got some number 10 strung out down the line. Then I've got a little, um, that's an F1 slim that is from RW. Nice little fin bristle, little float, doesn't take too much shot. I've just got one, two, three, four, four number 10s on that. That's perfect. And then I've got a little four inch hook lens of 011 to an 18s SLWG. Again, I'd probably choose an F1 pellet if I hadn't tied up, but we're just here for a little mess about, so there's no point spending time prepping for little pleasure sessions. But I guess without further ado, get some fishing done, keep feeding some maggots. I don't think you need to feed light, I think get them in. I'm gonna just, I've seen a few swirls, so I'm gonna shallow my float up to about 14 inch. And I feel like with a long line, I'm gonna be able to keep my pole tip away and flick my rig right past. So I'm just gonna flick my rig all the way past there and hold my rig float up, my sort of pole tip up. There you go, I've hooked one, only a little one. I'm gonna put the pole there. That's the first fish. Probably only about three or four ounces. Little roach. Nice little fish to start with. You can leave the maggots on, but I'm gonna change that one because it looked a bit ragged. He kind of made a mess of it. 
force ship out, I'm just going to throw a few more maggots in, put my sections together, ship out, and flick them in. I feel like keeping the pole tip high away from the water is probably going to help. Miss that one. One thing I always used to note when I used to come here, the fish always sat, they always come in to feed and sat off the backy pole tip. Them two things were like the most important thing, so often if it was a match, it, I'd start it like this far and then by the end I'd be at sort of 30 metres because the fish would back off. You just had to keep on the section then you'd, you'd get back in touch with the fish. I'm obviously missing quite a lot of bites here. So I don't know if the thing to do might be, there we go, I have made contact with that one. I might shallow up, I'm not sure. Because I'm not seeing as many swirls now, my pole tip's out there. One thing you can do, that sometimes can get you a bite, is just hold your pole, there you go. That's a better fish as well. All I did there was just hold my float sort of out the water by a little bit. That's a good, this is a big one. What could be a, Oh, look at that for a roach. So I set my little net up. <laughs> look at that. Over eight ounces, that is. Nice little roach. What I did there was basically hold my pole out the water so it was like a tight line. So effectively, you're fishing almost like if you go to an F1 venue, you'd fish overshotted. It's almost like that in a way, I guess. But you're not overshotting, you're just holding a tight line. And then if you are missing bites, sometimes the fish will literally just hook themselves. So I won't do that every time, but it's a good little trick to have. Flick the rig past, and then just feed some bait. And we don't get one. And then, oh, that one sort of pulled the line, that one did. They're crafty little things. Proper crafty. It's a lovely way to spend an evening though. The sun's back out, but we're nicely in the shade under this bush. But what I'll do is try that again, see if that works. Do that and then just feed over the top, hold it tight. Just drop it down. Can I just keep feeding because them roads, they just come straight up and into the, into the feed. Sometimes a tight line is no good, you've got to just keep flicking it past. Just try different, keep your different methods in your head. That's how I think about it. And then you can, if something doesn't work, you can try something else and eventually you'll trick one. Oh. One thing that used to work really well on here was literally fishing a length of line about 15 inch long and just sort of flicking it in the water when you feed some maggots and you'd catch sort of like, there you go, got one eventually. It's only a little one, but they all count. Literally just flicking it in with, every time you feed some maggots, just flick your rig into it and just let it sort of fall naturally. And I think they are a bit cute in here. And if you can sort of trick them into thinking it's not attached to a rig, they'll have it and they'll just pull the elastic out. Right, so welcome back. Been fishing for about an hour now. 
still difficult to catch. I'm not sure why. I think it's just they're just being caught quite a lot. They're just not super easy to catch. But the key is just to keep feeding, keep lifting your rig out, flicking it well past, and hope one sort of like pulls you. Pulls your rig. It's been a really nice session. So nice just to be out, to be honest with you. Been fishing a lot of matches recently, and it's nice just to get pleasure fishing, to be honest. There we go. That one. They tend to hook themselves, but the ones that are, are going to stay on. Fishing a little bit deeper now, just to try and get me, let me have a little bit of a shorter line. Don't want to cut my rig down just yet. I want to just see if I can, if I need to fish deeper. Flick it past, and then throw some maggots over the top. Keep flicking my rig into the maggots. I feel like the fish come swimming in and they're just darting about. That's why when you hook one, they sort of pull the elastic out because they're sort of running at a million miles an hour through the maggots. But you can have a great little afternoon's fishing on not a lot of bait. Pint and a half of maggots. Cost me like three quid, four quid, something like that. You can get plenty of bites. Give you make a little lift and drop, sometimes that helps. Certainly getting plenty of bites, not catching many fish. Well, getting plenty, getting a, a fish plenty, plenty often, but not as many times as I'm getting bites. But it just shows you have got to try and work out on the day. It's not always easy. Nice to get out though. Enjoy a little session. Catch a few fish. See what I'm going to do actually. Before we end the video, I'm going to get my get my extra section I'm up here because whenever I used to come here as a youngster, I always used to end up fishing at about 30 meters by the end of the day, which is pretty awkward considering how steep the banks are behind you. But if you just get your section, just go a smidge past. Can often get you another run of fish. There you go. You got one. This one's nice, nice stamp one, I think. Look at him. Oh. He's a nice one, isn't he? Trip him back. One time, I was fishing on this exact peg in a match. Middle of winter, absolutely freezing cold, half the lake was frozen and um, shipped back to get a fish in. Put my, I had to break down two or three times because I was fishing long out there in deep water. Missed my um, pole sock and we plumb in 13 metre sections leading to the lake. It's probably still around there on the bottom. There'll be plenty of tackling here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> The joys of fishing deep venues, there was no getting that back. It's probably, I don't even know, where I'm fishing now, it's probably at least uh, 10, 10 foot, something like that, I'd say. Luckily I had a spare section in my bag. <laughs> 
I think I ended up winning the match that day. We had like 10 pound a little roach. Caught 30 meters on the bottom of ground bait. There you go. But there's no surprise that you can do big weights of roach. Like, look at the stamp for them. So you might not be able to see me because of the pole. But it's hooked right in the top lip. We'll catch a couple more before we call it a day. There we go. Oh, this is a good one as well. This is the one we need to finish on. I think he's a netter. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> we nearly lost the net. That's what happens when you fish it with about half the length of it usually is. But doesn't matter. We've got him. Biggest of the day. That's why we couldn't get him. Because of that size and they've been caught a million times, the older cell. Probably getting on for a pound. Look at the size of that. Absolute stunner. But hopefully you enjoyed that video. Just a little short one. I don't even want to put him back. A little short video. Um, there he goes. Doing a little bit of pleasure fishing. Not matches for once. I think I might film a live match tomorrow if I feel up to it on the morning. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, like it if you enjoyed it, comment below if you've got any questions, um, anything you want to know, please comment, I'll happily reply to you. Hopefully you might have learned a few things and enjoyed a little session with me, so hopefully I'll see you on the bank soon. If, I do, if you see me, come say hello, I'm happy to chat and yeah, all in all, tight lines and I will see you on the bank very soon.